six, seven, eight. I'm <clears throat> I'm just doing some null powder here. Okay. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, Twitch tells me we are live now. Um, we're going to continue from last time where we had created um, on this uh, replit. Um, you know, I say um a lot. I wonder if there's a way to like automatically delete that. It sounds stupid, but it's um kind of natural. And you know, it's also the name of a city, um Alcoin City. So we had gotten it to where we could type in uh, star names, like I really need to stop saying this one, but okay. And city names, like the only city that matters, Albany, New York. No, whoa, it's the wrong Albany. Uh, we do need to clean up where this pop-up appears, uh, but the, the... How many Albanies are there? Quite a few. Um, like this. The only problem here is um, we have an entire hash that defines where cities are and where stars are, uh, but unfortunately uh, we have no way of, unless we want to search through the whole list for a label that matches whatever gets typed in here, we have no way of getting that data, sort of, uh, you know, this latitude and longitude data uh, back from the city name, at least not easily. So um, that may have been a mistake here. Um, and I think, let's take a quick look at the autocomplete, uh, you know, jQuery that we're using here. Um, and append to, okay, autofocus, delay, um, okay, disabled, um, min length. We probably want to assign a min length to city and maybe even to, to, um, to the stars because right now uh, there's too many cities that match just a single letter. Um, okay. Okay, the, low, uh, the the of option defaults. Okay. Left top at left. So I don't know what that means, but okay. Um. So I don't know if there's a way to do like uh, keys and values. So let's take a look at some examples. Source can just be a list, which is fine. Um. It can be something that's more than a list, but to be honest, I don't know if you can get this other value out of it. Um, so I don't, so here's the function, this is autocomplete, does four, but as far as I know, there's no way to get this value out of it. It's just that you can happen to use the labels if you have them defined. Um, so let's see. Okay. So let, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Let me, let me see what the, uh, let's see if I type in Australia what happens. Okay. Oh, that's kind of clever. Actually, I like that a lot. Um, so basically, when you choose it, the value changes to the value. The only problem for us here is we have two separate values, right ascension and declination, and we don't really want the user to type it in twice to get the, uh, to get the same information. So the same issue that we had before, um, I guess, sort of applies uh, because we we still need a way to identify which of the which of the rows we're using without necessarily um, without necessarily you know looking through every one to see if the label matches. So the the short way of saying this is this is not the right way to set up these labels uh, because right now there's no way to uh, you know without knowing going through all of them. Uh, knowing which one we're looking for. Uh, and the way to do that, I think, is to have cities be a, a quote-unquote hash. you got to be careful here because the word hash doesn't have that same meaning. Um, and th then do something like... Um, so cities is going to be an array. And again, we will obviously update this with some real data, not with... Uh, not with garbage. I mean, I'm right now we're just going to put some garbage in here for, uh, for, for, Jesus freaking Christ. Hang on. Delete. Okay. Well, actually, maybe we'd better not do it this way. Um, so we're hoping to get is something like um, cities. 
The moment they say we're not going to do it that way, we do it that way. I am so freaking self-contradictory. Okay, so what's taking so long now? Cities? Come on. I think maybe I've confused Replit because I've made such a big change to the file, it needs to kind of update itself. So, what I'm thinking is that Replit could be a lot faster. Come on. Um, I may have to... okay. If this keeps being slow, I'll have to check both this machine uh, and the machine it's running on for... okay, well hang on one second here. We have... ooh! Pretty nasty looking, um, we have a pretty heavy load here on the other machine, so let me, I know you can't see what I'm doing, that's fine. You do not need to see. Um, alright, stand by. I killed a few processes. I am not afraid to kill more processes if it becomes necessary for the virtual machine to run. Now, VirtualBox and OBS are the two biggest memory consumers right now. Obviously can't do anything about that. Well, I mean, I can, but it's not very productive. Uh, because that's what we're using to run this stream on. Um, okay. Still a bit slow. Actually, still very slow. Um, let's see if there's other stuff running on this machine that maybe is sucking up some nasty bandwidth. So what's killing the CPU? Okay, so... Jesus Christ, it's web content. Unfortunately, okay, I think... One of them is this Twitch, which I can kill off pretty easily. One of them is this chat, which I obviously can't kill off too easily. Let's see what our load is here. It's pretty heavy, actually, for a system that's doing very little. Okay, it looks like it's going to make me kill off this 3699, which I'm pretty sure is the chat. So, oh, it's not the chat, it's something else. Oh, it was Replit. Yeah, okay, we probably need to get that back. So hopefully reloading it will speed it up. And hopefully... Big giant fairies will come down and help me. And, I, and, I, and it could be either kind, you know? It could either be like the kids' fairies, or it could be just gay people. I'm totally okay with that. So what I was thinking we would do is something like um, like this, where the uh, label... And again, this is JavaScript, so the label is actually the key of the object name. But then we could say something like this. Um, this is not the longitude and latitude of uh, Sao Paulo, by the way. And I guess if I'm going to be consistent with my own... Uh, conventions. This is LNGLAT. And we don't even need the longitude because it turns out that that's not relevant to the calculation. But I feel too ugly about not not doing that. Um, so now this won't work because we have no... Um, so what we actually need here is array keys of cities. And obviously we're going to have to refill this uh, quite a bit. Um, And the nice thing is now when we get the result, we can just look it up very quickly by saying cities of whatever the, the key is that's been typed in. So let's run this. Um, is it capital? Ooh. Are we having an issue? Array keys is not a function? Mm. Yes, it is. Or do I mean cities keys? Hang on. <sighs> JavaScript sucks. Well, it's it's. Okay, script error. That's not very helpful. Um. Pretty sure array keys is a function. But let's let's figure it out. Of course, bad enough that you can't just do the keys on the um, on the object itself. You have to say object not array keys. Again, this is another reason um, everybody hates JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do object keys. Of and I actually think I ran into this before, so I feel doubly bad now scr for screwing this up. Okay. There it is. Oops, there it is. 
Okay. It is technically Pomodoro time, but since this is the first one, uh, I'm going to skip it, but I will be doing the others. Uh, okay. So now we just need to create the big cities in this format. And let's go ahead and do that from over here. And we'll obviously need to change the format here. Um, excuse me. So it's going to be cities, apostrophe, and another apostrophe to end it. And it's going to be... Yeah, and the, the names are re the the numbers are really starting to get to me, but I think I might not be able to do anything about that. Um, so the the label here will be dollar sign f um, two dollar sign f ten, just like it was before. Um, let me move this a bit to the left, um, a little bit more to the left, and then dollar sign f um, comma space. Do is that comma space dollar sign f eight. So this will now just be the um, the key for which we're setting, and then we'll say that's equal to, well, the label we already have, so now we're just say say, say the latitude and longitude. And if this, I think there's a, oh, wow. That's not fucking bad, actually. Um, I guess the only thing that's going to bug me about this is... Um, is the having the numbers in as uh, as admin zero codes? And it's okay where it's like um, I see, but see the problem is with Australia. This is yeah, this is Australia. These codes should really be like NSW or something. They they really should be the uh, the names of the of the um, or the abbreviations for the Australian territories. And I'm hoping it's not that bad for Canada. It is that bad for Canada. Okay. Hang on one second. Uh, Aurora. Okay, Aurora, Illinois is where Wayne's World is from. But we're not looking at that. Uh, so let's take to see if we can find this. Okay, that is... I'll go and pipe to less. Um, Toronto, Aurora, AUZ... Okay, that was probably not helpful because I don't know where the hell Aurora is. Why don't we s uh, find out where, um, I happen to know that Vancouver is in British Columbia. So if we can get that out here, um, if we can find a BC in there, that's what we want to use. If we can't find a BC in here, um, okay. These are supposed to be big cities, guys. I don't, I don't know why some of this is like looking really weird. Um, Abbotsford, Burnaby, Campbell. Uh, how many freaking Vancouver's are there? Oh, the time zone is Vancouver. That's why. Okay, I need a big city in in. Is Manitoba a city or a or a um, or a province in Can? In Can well, I guess. All right, let's just get a list of. Uh, well, okay. I'm going to see if I can find a list of Abbotsford. These are not super huge cities. Um, I know there's a Barrie in, in the United... I'm trying to find one that I happen to know just off the top. Calgary, I happen to know, is in Alberta. So if there's a, if there's a way that the 0-1 could become AB, that would be fantastic. If there is not a way that can happen, uh, then I might be stuck for this. Because I'm... Okay, here we go. So Calgary, 0-1, and... No. So they do not have Calgary, Alberta listed uh, as Calgary, Alberta, Canada. They just have it listed as Calgary 01. Um, so that, that's kind of ugly. Um, okay. My chair keeps squeaking. Sorry about that. Um, so this is a very minor issue that I'm going to beat to death, apparently. Now the program I use to find cities should actually, it does a join condition to find uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So it, it knows exactly where this is. Um, we might be able to find a better list of um, 
large cities that does not involve uh, that has a better format than GeoNames does. Um, other option is to just eliminate the state everywhere. Um, and yet another option is okay. So this is this is where you want to be a little bit careful because now we're creating a Perl one-liner that's getting pretty much obnoxiously long now. It's still a one-liner because it is going to fit on one line, and I think you could prove that any Perl script can may be turned into one line if you're clever enough, but that doesn't mean you should do it. And this is where we're really getting into the sort of limit of what you can do with a one-liner. So I can call that label, so this looks like we're not doing anything different, and right now we're not, but... Oh, I missed, I, I dropped a couple things there. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Okay, good. So something, right now, nothing, nothing, nothing interesting has happened. Um, and now we can do this, which is really sort of pushing the limits here. We can change label so that if there's a comma followed by any number of spaces, followed by anything that's pure digits, followed by another comma, followed by any number of spaces, um, I think even zero is fine. We can replace that with a single comma space. And so now, any place that we would have had a number for the state name, we have a, we have the numbers gone, basically. So the only time we're going to get um, state names is when they're not numbers. Um, again, to the extent that this is pushing it, I would say it's pushing it a lot. Okay. And I guess the other thing we need to do is because these are not just raw the way the way we're doing this, this doesn't make sense. We actually need to say cities of that uh, is equal to so cities of Abu Dhabi, Bama. This is I think this is the Euro United Arab Emirates actually has a latitude and longitude of this. Um, and I think for all this magic to work at the very top, you do need to say uh, you need to declare cities as an empty array. Otherwise, this won't work. So. And we no longer need commas because we're not declaring a, a list here, but just semicolons. So ev each one of these is a separate declaration. Um, and f with this, we we can fill in latitude and longitude. So let's go ahead and put this into cities. Nope. No. 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 Into big cities JS. And then we will once go over here. Reload. I think the only thing we need to add now is cities, set cities to be an array to begin with. Uh, and I think this is good. Uh, did we get rid of all the, the apostrophes inside the... Um, um, oh yeah, we did. We got rid of all the apostrophes in the city name, and uh, presumably the, uh, the state and country names don't have any apostrophes. Uh, okay, so we have, for the third time, no, actually for the 20 billionth time, Define big cities, we're going to copy to temp, we're going to overwrite, we're going to copy to REPL, and then we're going to see if we can do some completions, and this time we're going to, um, we're going to actually try to use the completions to fill in latitude and longitude, which of course we haven't defined yet. Uh, so lots, lots of fun stuff happening here. Replace. Okay. Now let's make sure that we haven't broken everything. We we'll probably have. Um... Okay, that took a few seconds to load that in, which worries me, but... Okay. Yeah, I think we maybe want to make this like a minimum of... You have to type in at least um, two characters. Uh, let's see if we can... Actually, now that it's been primed, I bet it's going to be a lot faster. Well, I'm wrong. It's not, it's not too slow, but it's not too fast either. This one, I think... Um well, that's not good. Oh, right, because we're not using the constellation names anymore, we're actually using. I want to find Zubin Janubai, it's one of my favorite stars. There it is. Zubin, oh, oh okay. And it's the northern of the two stars in the scales of, I in Libra, which used to be the scales of the Scorpion, and is the only greenish tinted star visible to human eyes, supposedly. I, I wouldn't quote me on that. Okay. Um, so now. Let's go up here and clean this up a little bit. 
And we actually don't want to put these, l we want to put these last because these are sort of alternatives to entering the, the right ascension declination latitude yourself. So let's go ahead and go over here. Plus let's go ahead and actually put, put in some freaking labels on this crap. Um, right ascension hours input type equals text ID equals RA declination degrees um, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to keep putting the word decimal here because it it makes it longer and it's sort of understood but you know and there are always to do sample values here too which we might actually uh, we might actually use this deck okay uh, and then latitude decimal degrees And at some point, which we will do here, we need to indicate that the longitude is not, it's not an oversight that we don't have it. It's not relevant to the calculation. Uh, but okay, longitude came. Or, I probably need to put breaks between these. And this is where it gets really ugly. I mean, this is just very icky HTML. And this could be like a font size plus something. Um, or you can enter star in city. Uh, city name. Okay. So I think we've beaten that to death now. And I think from now on we're going to just, as we probably should have in the beginning, we're only going to look at this on a separate page. We're not going to look at this sort of in this very thin, um, this very thin little pane that they give us which the word pain is a adequately named here. Okay. I just went like way off screen for some reason. Okay. So, it's over here. Okay. All right, so that's that, that's that, that's that. Star name. Yeah, let's see. So we want to have Brigel, okay. I think we're going to make these both a limit of two. You have to type in at least two characters uh, before you can get uh, before you can get autocomplete. And I think we can do that with I forget what the what the title was, but it's, it's a very simple um, option. Pen to lot of folks disabled min length. So if we do that, we should be able to say source autocomplete sources this min length is 2, and over even over here, min length is 2. So now we just need to reload this, and then T, no suggestions, U, suge we need to fix where the hell that's showing up, but anyway, um, and here, A, nothing, G, wow. I'm tempted to make these both three, and why am I let it open in a window? I don't know. Um, let's make these both three, actually, and I think I'm not going to mess with it after that. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Text on change. Okay. Now we have like five different input fields. In theory, we could loop through them and assign them all the same uh, function if something cha you know if something uh, changes, but let's see. So for right now we're gonna try to assign them all one. Um, oh, actually, hang on. We haven't actually defined this, have we? This is um, document. I think maybe we can cheat a little bit here and put the on changes in here. So on change, is that right? Is that, is that correct? Or, no, actually I want to be able to use the, uh, the um, uh, replets autocomplete feature. So we are just going to say, yeah, let's do this. Um, document get element by ID 
Now, I really, really doubt it's going to let me... Yeah, it won't give me a list. Um, on. Change. Okay, good. Equal F. So, right now we're trying to do it all in one function. We might... Um, well, actually, you know what? When the RA changes, we don't want to do anything. It's only when... Um, city or star change. Because um, the other stuff... Um, the other stuff is going to just... You type it in and... Uh, I guess we need a button to say compute or something at some point. Let's go ahead and do that now before I forget. Uh. That sounds way too exciting. Like, go! Go, man, go! Go, speed racer. And, of course, now we're so sort of merging this program back into the uh, uh, BC, you know, the Heliacal uh, replet that we had before. Um, and at some point, we're going to merge that code so it, so it all works together. <laughs> right. We're going to try to merge that code as so it works together. All right. Um, okay, so now I see what why... All right, hang on. Okay. I don't know why the hell that went uh, into a new page, but we're going to keep it from doing that now. All righty. So we have this, this, and this. Or you can start typing in the star name. And let's see, Sirius. Procyon. Aldebrin. Let's see you do Aldebrin. Nice. So now, when that happens, of course, we need to update right ascension and declination, or or latitude. Um, note that longitude, that longitude, is irrelevant to this calculation. Paragraph there. Okay. Alrighty. So let's see. I am so tempted. Yeah, let's do this. On change, we'll say um, update city, which is not correct. We're actually going to update the uh, longitude, sorry, the, the latitude, and update star, which we're going to update right ascension and um, the other thing, declination. Okay. Okay. What's interesting here, I think... Um, we don't actually care what the event is because, well, we know it's an on change on city. So what we're going to do here is, uh, and let me go ahead and just, um, we'll need the RA field uh, eventually, so we might as well just define it here and the others. Uh, and again, we could be very clever here and put this into like a little array. So, you know, every field is like, field of RA is get element by RA and all that good stuff. Uh, and I'm tempted to do that now, but let's not. And so the deck field is the declination, and the lat field, of course, is the latitude, and there is no longitude field. Okay, so why does this become important? Because when we update city, we need to say... Um, well, okay, let's go ahead and get the city that we got. So it's, um, it's the value of city... Oh, do we not have that defined either? Ugh. Okay. Yeah, we just have to do it this way, don't we? Um. All right. Okay. And I think I did this earlier with actually just actually looping through the text elements. Uh, in this case, I'm going to hard loop through um, through the fields that I happen to know are there. And let's see. First of all, I want to make sure this works. But then second of all, I need an array here to hold these suckers. Um, and I guess I'm going to do that. I don't even need to do this dollar sign star bullshit. I can just do... Um, you know, whatever I call the array, to autocomplete on that. And I like it, so I'm going to put a zip on it. 
if you like you put a zip on it oh the single ladies oh the single ladies alright alright Pomodoro back in two Okay, and we're back. And so now what we're going to say, well, let's see if this works first. Aha! This is one good reason to actually keep it here because we do need to look at the console. Update star is not defined. This is true. So let's define it real quick. Okay, no, that didn't work. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, let me see where else I use the in. Okay, here it is. Hmm. So does that mean I need to name this array? Um, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised given the nature of Java shit. Which by the way is the correct name, correct way to pronounce JavaScript is Java shit. So now I can do I in fields and this will give me the same answer, but now I can say fields of I. Yep. And this should give me the, the actual field names. Yep. And so now, field is going to be the quote unquote array that maps field names to their actual fields in HTML. In other words, fields, no, field of fields i equals document get element by id of fields i. That probably wasn't worth the freaking effort. So now I can do a console log on field, which should give me a list of five uh, HTML elements. Y'all pretend that's correct. Um, yeah, okay, that is correct, I think. Okay, so now I should be able to do this. Oh, hang on, I didn't need to do that quite. Let's do a and a control V to recopy. So now in theory this is just um, this is just field of star. And this is just field of city. We built this city field from HTML. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Yes, that is the uh, the uh, worst um, wait. Okay, hang on. Okay. We appear to have lost some magic. Yep, we appear to have lost some magic. So let's go ahead and run this, see what's wrong. Field star autocomplete 
Yeah, I don't think that is either. I think it's autocomplete. Um, so we're... Oh, autocomplete is not a function. Mm, yes, it is. Field star should be exactly the same thing as dollar sign number star. Okay. Alrighty, time to do some console logging. And I think... We gotta be careful here because dollar sign has a different meaning to JavaScript in the we're not eliding here. Hmm. Gets worse and worse. Alright, let's see if that fixes that error. Yep. So for some reason. Is it that I cannot mix and match console log and the uh, JS query selector? The jQuery selector? Apparently not. So let's see what this says here. Oh, I have to use it. Okay. Oh, it's dollar sign parentheses than the thing that you want. All right. So I meant to do... Now this becomes an interesting question as to whether or not this is going to work at all. Okay. So that is what we expect. And then what is field star? It should also be one of those things. Oh, wow. Wow. So there's apparently more to um, number star, this thing here, than there is to field star. So it's more than get element by ID. Um, that's just freaking weird. But okay. So it's a different thingy that, I, maybe that's because in jQuery you have to do that. Maybe that's how it knows that it's a jQuery object, uh, specifically to jQuery. So, let's see if this helps. The vagaries of jQuery. Not as bad as the vagaries of JavaScript. Okay, play's taking a while here. Oh. Okay, didn't, didn't die. That Antares. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Again, we, we really need to work on that positioning, but that's not a huge deal. Okay, so this was less useful than I thought, but at least we can now refer to the fields as field, you know, bracket field number. So here I should be able to, here I definitely should be able to say field city on change field star on change and I guess I should be nice and put these things in single quotes okay no error so far All right, so update city this is the this is sort of the coup d'etat here this is the the part that actually does something um, so when someone updates the city, we want to say field latitude value equals field city value dot lat. Because we are looking up, no, 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 no. Field city dot value. And then we need to take the cities of that and take the lat of that. And if this works, I will be beyond impressed. Well, it didn't error. Yeah, 
and nothing happens. So kind of what I expected actually. So let's see, so if I put in a city like A, B, D, Aberdeen, this guy, and now something's wrong here. Field lat is null. Okay. Um, I sort of see that actually. So let's see. Um, so first of all, let's make sure that the uh, we get the uh, field city value correct. That should just be whatever we typed into that uh, into that text box. Excuse me. Okay. I'm also going to see if we can find Aberdeen, Scotland. There it is. And the problem here is we log undefined. Field city on change equals update city. So it does get called field city value. Let's see what we have here. I'm pretty sure it's just value, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, actually, it's not complaining about this. Oh, okay, this is good. This is actually good, yeah. So it has that value. And then I want to find the cities field corresponding to this value. So that's that should be reasonable. Let's find Bismarck. Oh! So far, this is looking pretty good. So now we have this, and I guess the only possible issue here is this lat is being misinterpreted uh, as as going with the with something else. Now let's find the capital of South Dakota, which is Pierre. <laughs> oh, they don't have it here. It's not a big enough city, I guess. That doesn't seem right, though. Ooh. They probably don't have Pierre. All right. Field. Okay. So maybe I need to do parentheses around this, and then lat. That might be the only issue. Okay. Now I can want to find Chicago. Okay. There it is. So the only problem I was having here is that I didn't have parentheses around this part. Okay, um, let's run this. Let's go ahead and go crazy. Let's go crazy, crazy. Oh, I got bored of Chicago, actually. Okay, it did not update the latitude. Not cool. So let's see what happens here. Field lat value equals this should work. Oh, did I need to run it again? Yeah, that might have been it. Okay. I'm running out of Springfield, there's like a ton of them. And it does not automatically fill in the latitude. And it complains field lat is null. So Oh. Oh. This is complaining that I didn't fill in the field value correctly. Um, in other words, this is claiming that fields that document get element by ID. So maybe I didn't name my field correctly. Wow. Double screw up. I named the field longitude full length instead of latitude short length. Okay. Let's see if we can fix that. Hideous. Okay. Well, I heard the south side of Chicago is the baddest part of town. But apparently it's not showing up on our list, so let's do this. Indonesia. Okay, so it doesn't happen 
until you sort of parse out of here. So that's not really that great because you still have to move out of there. Okay. So what do we want to say? What is the name for when the value changes, but you're still you're still inside the uh, inside the text box? I guess we could probably find that out by saying um, let's see. I wonder if um, I wonder if jQuery offers us anything that sort of other things won't offer. So let's just see if. Um, Uh, again, it's parentheses because that is interpolation, and then dot. Okay, on. Change. That's not very exciting. So why don't we just do field. City. Dot on. Okay. Clearly not understanding what it is. Um. Document get element by ID. Unfortunately, I don't know how clever the uh, replit uh, IDE is. So RA, whatever, dot on. Yeah, here's what we can do. On abort, on activate, on animation can Jesus Christ, on change, on click, on command. Is there like an on type end or something? Touch move, touch start, touch end. And honestly, I don't even know what these things are. So maybe it's time to look up the instructions. Yay. Um, let's do that over here. Um, JavaScript text, actually jQuery text entry methods, text input methods. Um, um, let's return this context of the selected element. Um, and maybe we'd better go back to. So we're sort of mixing and matching here uh, JavaScript text entry events. Event. Okay. The input event fires has been changed. Um, okay. Okay. So if I do, oh, Nito Frito Bandito. Okay, so it is character by character. So it is the input list we're looking for. I think we're not some problems here. Um, is that on input or is that input? I th I'm going to guess it's going to be on input uh, because I've got such a stellar record with this. On dot on input. It is on input here. So we're going to say on input. This is going to create a problem, but I'm okay with that. And the problem it's going to create here, hopefully not a not a console error, but the problem it's going to create here is if we start typing in a city name, um, yeah, it it might not exist in the it might not exist in the array until we're done typing it in. Now it's fine. Um, um, let's see. Yeah. So the problem here is going to be that it, when we start typing, 
uh, it's not going to be defined. So when we update city, we need to check to see if um, this, this, you know, there is a field city. Uh, the city's field city has exists. All right, Pomodoro, back in two. And we're back. Okay, still nobody in chat, which is good. So what we need to do here is make sure that the uh, city's field city is actually defined. Now I'm wondering, this may not work. If it isn't defined, can we just return? And I get the feeling this isn't going to work. I get the feeling this is going to do something terrible. Hmm. I'm actually suspicious now. Oh, it didn't actually freaking do anything, though, did it? So it didn't actually update the latitude value. Script error. Um, let's see. Let's just do it this way. If city is undefined, just return. Otherwise, Set the latitude value to um, city.lat. That seems like a reasonable kind of thing to do. Let's run it. Yeah, script error is not that helpful. Now it should immediately, yeah, it's not updating the latitude field. Um, script error is not a very helpful error message. Okay, so let's make sure it's actually getting all the way over here. We may be checking against undefined doesn't work. So this will at least tell us that it gets that far. Maybe choose a city that actually exists. Okay, so the problem is we can't apparently check to see if a uh, city is undefined. We actually need to check to see... Uh, it's, I mean, it's going to be array key exists is what we're looking for. Um, okay. Boy, I got a lot of crap in here. Um, phew, that's not what I meant to do at all. JavaScript key exists in map or whatever. Checking if a key exists. Um, oh. OK. 
Okay, that's that's not too bad. He, so it's a different use of the word in, I think, because with the for loop it loops through them. So, um, if field city, I want to put a not in front of this. So if the, f the city we're looking for is not in cities, then we return. Uh, if it is in cities, we just, we, well, we're kind of wasting a variable here, but okay. Let's see if that even compiles. Nope, it does not compile. Not field city in cities. There is a end to this not statement there. Then the end to the if statement. Now let's see what happens. Okay, it doesn't destroy anything. Didn't do what we wanted, but we're getting closer. Script error is not helpful. Not field, field, and cities. Uh-huh. All right, so... That should actually be okay. So let's see if it gets over here and then crashes, or if it gets further before it crashes. So if not field, city, and cities return, otherwise log alpha. There's a city in Denmark called Ringo Palingading or something. Um, that's not cool. The Ukraine. Norvienka. Yeah. All right, script error is not getting us anywhere. So let's just see if it makes it to this point here. And we'll have to call it beta because we're already using alpha. Interesting. All right, so we do get there, and then it doesn't for some reason like this. Field city. Uh, yeah, that's not what I mean at all. Field city value. Um, otherwise. Um, Let's see, let's city equals city field city. Um, no, it's the value we're looking for, not just, okay. So I think what we can do here is actually, um, even though this is not the correct advised way of doing it, um, we get the field city value, which is what we want, and let's city equal to that. And oh, come see, come see. Um, and this is not the recommended way, but we should we'll never be undefined if unless we're doing something terribly wrong. Equals undefined, then we return, and if it is not, we say, um, Field that val equals the city's latitude, and so in this case we are, we are correct, unless we are not. Okay. Are there cities that begin with letters? Whoa. O R D. Um. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have been so hasty about that. Uh, if this is the opposite condition that we need, um, field city value, which is, I guess that one we can actually say, um, that one we actually can say is the value of the whatever is inside the city field. So that, we're okay there. Now the question is if city in cities rather if not city in cities return um, and then equals city so that's the field city I think that's what we want and that actually looks like it's actually 
letting us type that in, which suggests it's a good thing. Um, let's see if there are any cities that start with BRA. There must be, right? Zabrat. That's still not good, script error. Uh, this should be fine, though. This is the value. This is what's in the... Um, I'd remove my debugging statements far too early. So this is a condition that should be testable. And then this... By the way, I love how helpful the script error is as an error message. Something somewhere is wrong. Piece of crap. Okay. C-A-R. Beta, alpha, beta. Okay, good. So we're getting, we're getting over here. Um, if not city, that should be valid. Because this is a string, and cities is an array. Do I need another? No. So this should presumably fail before we get to the point where it prints out true or false. Oh. Okay. All right, well this should now, this is not, this is getting kind of difficult now to debug, but okay. Okay. True, true. Uh, I guess I'm not, so is it if it, City is in city. Something's wrong before we get to. G that's impossible, though. <laughs> I say, with a great deal of confidence that I do not feel. Um. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's be a little bit tighter on this. Let's go into this if statement, and before we return, just tell people we're returning. Um. Close enough. And so, I mean, we, we that part should be okay. okay. Uh, returning, returning, returning. So it's fine right up until the time I actually choose a freaking city. In which case, I mean, the gamma j just sort of happened then. Let's see if we can do this. This is weird though. I mean, there, there's no possible way it should be able to break right where it is. Okay, I haven't chosen a city yet. Um, hmm. I could do an else here, but that's kind of stupid because I'm returning. And then we'll close off. Nope, that's the function. Okay. But th this this doesn't really make sense now. So the moment this comes up, it gets annoyed. Uh, before I've even done anything. Okay. So is it the autocomplete that it's unhappy with? Okay, I guess we're over here we can also log what the actual freaking value is before we go and check um, whether that key exists in cities, but this is getting a little bit weird. Boom. Beta L, beta L, beta L, I, K. And then...
the moment it doesn't return, something terrible happens. Um, it doesn't re it doesn't log not return or gamma. Huh? So, um, okay, that's strange though because when I type in the third character, a list pops up. Uh, I get to choose from the list, but does that trigger a change? Apparently it does not. Um, okay. Oh, okay, now it's typed in something else because I've got more beta going. Okay. Also, also this undefined has been to bug me. Where am I doing something that's undefined? Um, all right, do I have some script code here that's undefined? Uh, I don't seem to. Bright stars, I've got big cities. Oh, wait a minute. Well, I need to fix that, but that's not the problem. Um, all right, very strange behavior here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let city equal field city value. Uh, if that city is one of the keys in cities. Now I wonder if what I'm doing here needs to be array keys cities or something. Because um, it's a uh, it's an array reference or something. So let me let me take a quick look at that again. Um, key in object. If not, key and object. I think that's what I'm doing, right? If not, city and cities. The only thing I can think of is maybe this has to be an array, which means I should be looking at array keys of cities as opposed to um, the whole object cities as a complex object. Um, let's see if other people have other advice. Um, has own property. Uh, that's interesting that you could do that and it, it won't crash. Um, okay, this seems unnecessarily complicated. Um, so it, it looks like just has property would do the trick, as opposed to in, because that seems like it's more direct to say has property, so let's see. Um, okay, cities is an array, but it doesn't know that, that's fine, but there is an array here that we do know something about which is, okay, that's not quite right either. So let's just create a test object here equals A goes to B, C goes to D. Um, so test has, wow, really. Test field any help there? Autocomplete, C, Cities, Console, Deck Field, uh, let's see, Get Element by ID, yeah, something's really funky going on here, okay. So let's just call this test X, because I think maybe I'm using test somewhere else. Dot, what can I put here after this lovely object? A P, 
apparently not a hell of a lot. Okay. Alright. Pomodoro time, be back in two. Okay, and we're back. Uh, and I'm just being quiet for a second. Just to throw you guys off a little bit. Alright, let's see if this does what we want. Okay. So, this we still actually... Actually, this test we should probably move outside of the update city because this is just a test we're doing uh, in generically. So we should be able to just put it up here. And I expect to see has property is not a function. Yep, nail that. Um, so now can we say a in test x? Is that going to give us an error? Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so I'm stumped. Now, this should give us false because B is a value, it's not a key. Okay, that works. All right, we're going to fig figure this out. And then over here, I guess we need a delta because we already have a gamma. We want to know whether city in cities. Uh, I wonder if I need parentheses around that. I probably do. And I might as well make it not so we have the not condition. Yep, every time. Alright, so now we just start typing in stuff. 
So, so far we're good, actually, because we have GGGGG. Um, as long as it doesn't seem to match a city name, we're good. The moment it matches a city name, something bad happens. So maybe that's... Maybe that's where the issue is. So here we have autocomplete. Um, for city, min length is 3. Okay. So maybe this somehow breaks the on input. Uh, when it autocompletes and you select something, it breaks on input. Although that still should never happen. I mean, that is a... Um, it's a ridiculous thing to happen there. But, all right, let's see what we're doing here. So... I probably lost my important Google search for um, text, JavaScript, text, entry, events. Um, okay, so maybe... Yeah, this is... This is um, on input okay so the on input should occur immediately after the change not until you lose focus on the element which is what we want we want it to change instantly um okay this is all great and I get the feeling that autocomplete the problem here is going to be that autocomplete doesn't work well with this. Um, autocomplete and on change. Oh, well, that it's right there. Um, okay. And I get script error. Ooh. Function autocomplete. Wait. Um, autocomplete, but isn't isn't this that a, like a jQuery thing? Okay, this part I understand. Okay, so maybe. Hmm. Okay, so apparently we just use, um, yeah, well, that's, that's much simpler. So now we can just say, and when something actually does happen, we do update star. Over here, we just do a change update city. Um, which actually makes more sense because if, if you're not going to fill in a city, we can't do anything about it anyway. Okay. All right, let's see what this boogie does. Oh, it's unhappy. Okay, beta, that's good. That's all good. Um, okay, so we update city, um, we enter, we get the value of the city, delta is, now in this case we would expect delta to always be false. Um, so not returning gamma, oh good, it works. All right, so now we can clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and save this because we've got it working finally. And I will also save it to git as got it working finally. All right, All right. so now we can get rid of the debugging crap. 
Uh, right, so what we're doing here is if for some reason we've not been able to find it, um, I mean we should because it's completion, but whatever, for whatever reason if it's not in there, uh, we um, we can return and the lat value becomes the cities of city lat. So this should work. In fact, I'm so confident it's going to work, I'm going to just do it over here. Okay. Let's go to bung, whatever the hell that is. That, ooh, okay, but that's still not quite... Okay, so that's the on change, and we want on input. Let's see if there's anything better here. Um, uh, let's see. So that is, oh, so it's change, and we actually want it to be on input, which is slightly different. Um, oh, so they actually did want the on change. So let's see if we can just make this input and if that works. Because we want it to change instantly without having to lose focus on the city. Um, so can we define this to be input? Something tells me we cannot. Because uh, that would be too useful. Yep, we broke something. Script error. Yep. Uh. All right. Let's see if we can figure out. Do our. Let's see. Um, autocomplete on input. Um, here we go. Any event triggered on autocomplete. Um, monitor events. When, okay. Um Wow. Input on input. Uh Um Damn. All right, let's take a look at this working JS fiddle here. But is this an autocomplete? Um, ID value equals blah, class equals blah, 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 input text, the new value. Okay, so window timeouts, function on change value. Um, all right, somewhere we need to see the word autocomplete. Well, okay, it is in here somewhere. Too bad we can't find it. Um, So does this... Um, 
I think that guy missed the point. Okay, so when... All right, maybe this guy's got a better answer somewhere else. Oh, man. It's getting complicated. Um... Okay, some dispatches change events, some don't. Um, okay, so Firefox apparently does not. Um, um, well, that just turns it off. Okay, so apparently this is a, for some bizarre reason, it's a difficult problem. Um, yeah, I mean, we should not have to go to CSS for something this simple. Okay. So when autocomplete occurs, um, well, let's see what the options are to autocomplete. I, I didn't remember seeing change as one of them, but I, it actually might have been. Oh, here we are, yeah. The event will always come after the close. Close whenever the autocomplete menu closes. So that might be the, the magic bullet here. Um, okay, so that, that might be it. Uh, so instead of change, we'll say close, and I guess we should, we should only do it one at a time because we need to test it, but I'm going to go crazy here and just do it like this, run -orama. we need to fix that little, hey, that worked, it still gives a script error, but it worked because the latitude got changed here. All right, let's go out to our friends in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's about where they are. Awesome, so we got this nailed now. All right, so let's clean it up a little bit and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and save it before we clean it up. And push it to get and with the totally cryptic, less sucky comment. I wonder if anyone's actually looking at that getting going, what the fuck? All right, so let's review. Um, we are assigning fields to be uh, the, yeah, so we can recover it, get to them quickly. The autocomplete is this, and the moment the uh, menu closes, it calls the functions we need. So update city, okay, this is pretty good actually. Um, so we look at the value, if it happens to be a key in our cities array, if it doesn't, we return, otherwise we just set the latitude equal to that. So this should be very, very similar for update star. Let star equal field star value. If not star in stars, return. And the only slight difference here is we, we, we need to change two fields. Uh, field RA value equal stars of star, and I don't remember what, oh, do we actually know what this is, RA? <gasps> oh, that would be gorgeous. I, I didn't remember if I did RA and dec or uh, right ascension and declination. So this will be just this field, it becomes the declination, and God himself will smile upon us now. Um, I wonder which Portland it has here. Both of them. No, three of them. Okay. And let's see if we can find Bellatrix, one of my favorite stars. Ooh, that did not autofill 
right ascension and declination. But I think we can we can figure that out pretty quickly. Um, star 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 All right, Pomodoro back in two and two, uh, which is two minutes and two seconds. Bob Eubanks used to say it. Two minutes are the ads. Two seconds is one second for each of the bumpers. That a bumper is what comes between the television show and the ad. It's like a one second nothingness. All right, back in two and two. Okay, and we're back. Let's see what, uh, why this isn't working. Runorama. Store name. L. Algebra. L actually just means the in uh, Arabian, so that's why so many star names. Begin with AL. All right, so what the hell are we doing wrong here now? Yeah, this looks very, very similar. The only thing I can think, well, script error is just a weird thing to say, though. So let's make sure we have field RA and field, yeah, we do. RA and deck, not a problem. And I guess we need to make sure that stars has a, oh, it doesn't. That's right. We haven't fixed stars to have the same format as big cities. So that should not be a big deal but we need to do it. Um, so obviously we don't want to redo this, but this is the sort of format we're going to use, and our stars happen to be in, unfortunately, I think in a different format. So, um, so, Let's see what this does. I think this is the um, right. Um, so this now becomes stars. Did I do city or cities? God damn it. I think I did cities, even though it's now. Yeah, OK, that's fine. So we now have stars of you know, what the previous label was. Stars of 47. Um, yeah, maybe we better get a little bit more clever here. So the label is going to be this um, join here. Every field after the first, uh, whatever, the first ones that are not, um, the first, fi oh, the remaining fields after the um, first four fields, which I guess are uh, something, are the, are, are the, oh yeah, they're the, um, I actually have no idea what the hell they are. Bummer. Let's find out. Okay. Uh, oh, right, right. The first field is uh, RA declination uh, magnitude, which we're ignoring, and then um, the star number. I guess, th I, don't, I don't know what the hell the fourth number is. But we ignore that as well. But if there is something in the fifth field, um, we'll 
Right. If there's something in the, in the fifth field which is F4, we join it with everything. Then anything past that field is actually part of the name. So the label is now the name. Print star. I can make this thinner, actually. Um, in fact, maybe I'll just do that. Sort of continuously try and expand it out too much. Um, star label. Okay, print star label equal. And I think in this case we don't need any more any more escapes from parentheses. Um, I'm almost sure this is going to fail, but let's take a look. Yeah. So label is equal to this. Uh, print star label label equals RA of this deck of this uh, that. Uh, oh, and we need to end off our if statement, I guess. And we probably need to feed it an actual input. Always helpful. Okay. This is looking pretty good here. Not fantastic, mind you, but more than enough to do what we needed to do. If I do want to overwrite that. And then I need to upload it back to REPL, where hopefully it will remember to do its magic and overwrite it. There it is. Yes, replace. Okay, so now we can run the sucker again. Okay, already in error message, stars is not defined. Yep, because okay, that's bad for two reasons. One is I need to put stars in there. Two, I need semicolons. And three, I need to declare the array before I use it. So, several bad things are happening here. Um, many of which are fixable. Print stars, semicolon. And let's take a quick look here. That's looking pretty damn good. I guess if we were to be really clever, we could divide RA by 15, but I think we'll let our program do that. I'm also not sure why P, Aaron, and I is sort of a, an odd case, but we'll leave it in there unless it fucks something up. Okay. Okay, and then I need to actually go over here. Yep. RR to reload. And the only thing I need to do here is this. Because otherwise, uh, it won't let me start declaring keys of an array unless I've declared the array already. I'm pretty sure that is correct. Okay, then back over here to REPL. Uh, back over here to uploading. Bright stars. Yes, we want it replaced. And now, the magic will probably not happen, but hopefully maybe it'll happen. Okay. We're not getting an autocomplete. That's not good. Um... Okay, not good at all, but I think I know what's wrong here. Um, the autocomplete is now going to be on the, not on um, stars, but ra rather on object keys of stars, which is how we did it for cities now that we're making them equivalent. Okay, one more time. Nope, immediate error. Object, no, it's going to be object, I think, a, just a typo there. Okay, no error messages. Let's find the frickin' right ascension and declination of Deneb. Or Denebo, that's actually better. There we go. The only slight problem here is this needs to be divided by 15. We're going to get a script error here, but it doesn't matter because it works. Um, okay. So 
So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay. Oh, this time we will go with Deneb. Sounds about right. Um, and I want to know it from Honolulu. Honolulu. And uh, it won't do anything because we don't actually have the go, you know, fire to anything. Um, but this looks pretty good. This is uh, this is despite the script error that we get that is ambiguous. Uh, it we can actually get. Um, we can actually get, uh, you know, the, the automatic fill-ins. And now, just to make sure, I should be able to change this number without breaking anything. Um, it might be that we say if you finish the right ascension, gotta be careful here because we don't want a circular loop. We might say that if you fill in the right ascension or declination, um, the star name goes to null um, or something. But see now, Yeah, I think that's probably understood. And I, I really hate to say that, but okay. Um, what's a, what's a, Cochab is a nice star. I like Cochab. Good star. Pretty far north. Uh, and I like um, the White Horse, the city in Yukon. Um, also pretty far north. Okay. So now we have all of this. Now we don't have it hooked into anything. This is just the autocomplete routine. Um, now we need to hook it back into the code for um, finding the heliacal dates. And I think we probably want to actually add this code to that, that code instead of that code to this code. In other words, we want to go back to the... Um, excuse me. Um, back to the heliacal project and add this stuff into it. Um, and our other big problem was we were, um, our estimation of solar or right ascension and declination was um, too far off because it ignored the equation of time. Um, so we're going to use a much more accurate method that is probably too accurate, but you know, what you're going to do. Mm. Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, this is actually a myth. Okay, I'm going to keep that one. Um, always bad when you have, like, this uh, funky symbol here for the, the fave icon. All right, let's go ahead and find the other replet. In fact, we're going to find two of them. We're going to find interpolation... And the one we're going to modify to put these all into is Heliacal. So that's what I'm going to change. And now if we can find Twitch Interpolation. There. So we're going to do a couple of things here. So this is the, um, this is the one that's going to get all of, the, all of the attention here. Um, do stuff, do stuff, da 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 da. Um, okay, so find heliacal date is this, and that is probably a function inside of script.js. That's where I'm putting most of this crap. Okay, so here's where we actually have the um, uh, find the sun info on a given day of the year. Or well, actually, d equals vernal equinox. We could probably fix that a little bit. Um, so D is equal to the day of the year for, let's say, the year um, the year 2020. Let me make it this year, I guess, 2020. Uh, or we can always make it whatever year is coming up. But I think 2020 is okay because we do have the cleverness of getting maybe February 29th in there somehow. All right, so how do we do this? Let's go to the interpolation one. Um, Unix GMST, that's the only function in there? Okay. We see lunar interpretation. Okay. Wow. I have a lunar declination interpretation? That's amazing. Um, 
Okay. Alright. Oh, this is just really big, that's why. I guess I also should have a solar... Jesus Christ. Um... Okay, I'm trying to find the one that actually... This is the solar interpretation. Interpolation. And a lot of it's just a bunch of numbers. I'm trying to see if the actual interpolation occurs here anywhere. Um... And it might be that it doesn't. Solar RA interp, solar deck interp. There's obviously got to be some place where we have interpolation actually interpolated. Yeah, there it is. Um, interp X to Y, okay. Um, okay, well, there is that. So I think at this point we probably need to add BC lib staging and BC lib. We, we sort of knew we were going to need them. I mean, we, there really was no hope we'd get away without using them here in Twitch Heliacal. Um, the only weird question is, do we have the interpolation function? Um, in B in BC lib staging, or do I have an older version that doesn't have that? Uh, let me take a quick look here. It should be the it should be the um, it should be the latest version. So it should have there it is. It does have the interpolation function. In it. The other question is, do I have the sun interp and the um, lunar interp functions here? And I do not think I have those, so I need to download those from the interpolation. That is the uh, BC Lunar Interp JS, which almost definitely should be in, if it exists, it should be in here. It does not. Now, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to look for anything named Lunar with the, with the inter in there, and I shouldn't find anything except these garbage files which really need to be cleaned up. Um, and these are just getting worse and worse. Alright, so there's not. And I didn't expect there to be. So we will now let's see. Looter interp I'm surprised I've got it. No no I don't want to don't don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. It's too big. That's what she said. No it's not. Um, I'm trying to download it without, well, wait, but I'm trying to download it without visiting it, because it's a really large file. Okay, good. So I, that was kind of what I wanted to do. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, can I not download these files individually? Apparently I cannot. I can download the whole thing as a zip, which I will do now. Okay. And then we can go over here. And we'll, of course, to unzip it, we'll go into a special directory that's outside of git. ls minus l. Okay, so there should be a ls minus lat tilde downloads, pipe to less. It's very. Um, I'm vaguely curious if there's a difference between interpolation the eighth download and then seventh download I don't think there is actually but anyway copy that over here unzip that and then we can copy BC lunar interp BC solar interp uh, I think that's all we need In, well actually let me see how big these things are there they better be I think they're pretty small maybe maybe let's take a look at what lunar interp Lunar interp does what? Okay. And I would be very shocked if these were not Unix times. Oh, do, am I just doing these from like 2015 to 20... 25? Yeah, I am, apparently. Alright, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two.
Okay, and I'm back. Alrighty. So I think these are small enough that we can copy them into the uh, into Git. Uh, solar and lunar interp, and we'll go ahead and copy them into Astro. Woof woof, roll Rorge. That's the dog Astro from the Jetsons. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and upload them to, um, I guess we need to copy them to temp if I'm going to do that, to be consistent with my um, standard procedure here. And let's go back over here, and let's go ahead and upload both of them. I don't, in theory you could upload more than one file at a time. Um, let's do it. Oh wow, it worked! I did not think that was going to work. Okay, um, so now we need to go, oh damn it, I didn't mean to hit that one. All right, uh, so sun info, we're going to give the declination and right ascension of the sun on day D. Um, on day D of year, um, Day zero equals start of year. So this should not be difficult. Um, I mean, it will be, but it, it shouldn't be difficult. Um, the first thing we need to figure out is we're going to use the first day, uh, you know, the beginning of the first day of this year as zero. So we kind of need to figure out what that is. Not difficult. That's going to be date minus D, 2020, 01, 01. Let's make sure that's correct. It is plus percent s. That's that number. Um, so it's going to be the number of unix seconds since unix second of d day in 2020 plus, of course, d times 86,400 because there's 86,400 seconds in most days. Um, And I guess we don't actually care about yeah because we're using our own approxim we're using the interpolation approximation so we don't need that anymore and and so I guess we still need to return star info um. okay. Uh, the right ascension of the sun is going to be, this is where, oh, I guess I need to upload BC live and BC staging to standby, standby. I guess we will overwrite them just for fun. All right, so I could have uploaded four files at a time. Fun, fun. But now let's see if we can upload this and this at the same time. Booyah. And I guess in order to use them, we should probably put them into the index somewhere. Um, and I guess there's no reason to do that. We can do that ahead of time, so anything we put in script JS will be sure to be able to use them. Did I just say index? I did say index source. I meant to say script source. Script source equals vclib staging end script. Then we want bclibjs. This will just take forever to load. Uh, then we want bc uh, solar interp. Then we want bc lunar interp. And it occurs to me we will also need a list of cities and stars because again this is this is the program that's going to handle all that. Because uh, the helical equal rising we need to know where it's occurring and um, what star it is you're looking for. So I think brightstars.js we can just upload from bc git. Um, and 
and um, now I don't know if we should be putting this into Git or not, so I haven't done so so far. Oh, oh, today is still the 21st where I am. So that's why I did that. Um, so bigcities.js. How big is bigcities.js? Is it big? Yeah, it's, it's getting there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and copy that to temp as well. All righty. I have not put it in Git yet. Not sure I should. So big... Oh, actually, let's see if I can do big cities and bright stars at the same time. Yeah. Alrighty. This code takes forever to run, but you know, hey, that's just the price you pay. Um, big cities.js and bright stars. Big cities, bright lights. Big cities, bright stars. Okay, and then of course the the thing that runs everything. Um, it vaguely bugs me. I don't have listen.js bound anywhere unless I'm missing it. Oh, there it is. Oh, right, right. This is just for a little testing here. Okay, I think we're fine. Um, so now I'm going back to script.js. Um, we need to use the bclib staging function called interp. Um, interp to xy where... okay. And I am feeling a little bit like we should probably test this, but let's... So interp to xy, the interpolation object will be, um, interesting, um, the interpolation object will be something. Um, I guess I could rewrite this function here to be more like the other functions we've been dealing with, uh, which is, um, Let's see if we can do... Yeah, I guess the only problem here is... Um, yeah, I think that's actually okay, though. Um, so I could just do this as, like... Um, Oh boy. Uh, maybe I'd better not mess with this. I was hoping to do like where I could send multiple arguments to it. Um, yeah, like this, for example. X. Uh, interp it doesn't matter what order these are in because we're, they'll get sort of pulled out its correct values, div and mod. So then here I don't have to say all of this, I can just say x minus interp, I mean x whatever, over interp int length. In other words, wherever I have an object dot, I can get rid of it, uh, which is kind of nice, because we're already getting these variables in as we need them. Um, And so let me try this in the... This is really bad because I'm trying to test something and I'm changing it at the same time as I'm testing it. Very, very bad procedure. You should not do this. Um, but, okay, I did get rid of it, so that's that's kind of a good thing. Um, all right. I'm I'm very hesitant to do this. Let me see if I can um
But right now, let me actually just test it in the index. Let me test it like, you know, we have this code explicitly written out like this. Um, so console log interp to interp x. Y isn't that, okay, whatever. Interp x to y. Uh, the interpolation object here will be um, solar, god damn it, solar r a interp. And the value of x will be zero. This should give me, like, whatever the right ascension of the sun is at the beginning of this year. Um, I am hesitant, however, and think that this may not be working. Yep. Uh, interpret x, y. That's not the error I was expecting. Solar RA interp is not defined. I didn't think it would be. Um, I mean, it's not the first one, but maybe I just misspelled it. I think I spelled it correctly. It is not defined. Okay, and I'm thinking I'm defining it here in um that's what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. Too early. Oh yeah, because Yes. Okay, that's fine. Um Right. Because uh um of course this is the Unix time. So we'll just say the Unix time of this sucker here and we get that um maybe I better read the instructions huh um is there a div here Interpolation order is four. Um, and I think for some stupid reason it decided that um, I was going to provide this in milli somethings. Um, God only knows why. And 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 I I do allow for looping, so in other words, I still need to mod out by two pi. Um, so clearly, I have the brains of a crouton, and of course, this is just the um, this is just the object. And to get the value out of it, I need to get dot y divided by one two three one two three. Still not going to work, but get it closer. Okay. Um, we need to mod that whole thing now by two pi. And it actually has to be like this. Yep, I'm I'm brilliant. Mm. I maybe we should like log the value and instead of trying to mod the console log itself. Okay. That's in radians. So we now further have to take that whole fucking value. This is fun. Um, and divide it by math pi and multiply it by 180. And then end the console log there. Oh, except we're doing it in hours, so it's actually this number divided by 15. I, I realize I could combine those. 
And that actually seems about right. 18 hours, um, 18 hours right ascension. Um, at, at the beginning of the year. And so now, now we don't have to be quite as nasty. Now we can say like 86,400 times, let's see, January has 31 days, February has 28, that's 29 in this year, 60 plus 20. So the 82nd day, we should see it pretty close to uh, zero hours. Nice. 80th day, we should see it pretty close to something else. Hmm. 79th day, I think this is going to be the, this is before the equinox. So we should see 23 point something. Very, very nice. Okay. So now all we need to do is take this piece of crap and copy it over to script. Um, and let's see. We're not going to console log this, obviously. We're going to say interp... And we actually need to return this in radians, I think. So, so we're probably okay there. Uh, the interpretation is still stolen array. The X is going to be the number sec. And and I guess if we're going to be just assholes about it, we might as well just put the div in there since we have a there. Um, so this should give us back an object whose y value is the right ascension of the sun. It, it's in radians and it's not been modded out by 2 pi, but that is actually okay because we actually sort of need it that way. We need the right ascension to be higher the later we go, even if it's flipped over to zero, because we're doing a binary search. Okay. Um, and so, God willing, the declination is almost the same thing, except it's uh, interpret solar deck interp. Um, okay, and then we don't need this, and I think we can just do this. Um, all right, Pomodoro back in two and two. Okay, and I'm back. Did you miss me? Okay, um... So if this is correct... I am so sure it's not going to work. Okay. Almost instant error there. Destructed parameter is undefined. Okay, and I think I know what's wrong there. If div is not defined, I could define it to be zero, but I want the empty string. I think that's more awesome-ish. Whoa. Um, let's find a situation here where, okay, invalidate, invalidate, I'm okay with that part. Um, 
let's see. So let's go back over here to script. Uh, let's second equal this. I'm going to go ahead and let um, Replit mess this up. Uh, formatting wise. Okay, so blah 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 blah. We'll leave the commented code there. Bin search blah 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 blah. Um, and by the way, I'm probably going to call it in about <whistles> 2 hours 15 minutes already. Probably in 15 20 minutes. Just FYI. Okay, so now we need to do a little bit more work here because when. Um, this is all part of the binary search. Uh, because the problem here is we're going to get our right essentials that are very big. That's okay though. Um, yeah. And here's where we need to be a little bit. The function that we're going to get back, I'm pretty sure that F0 and F366 are going to be huge. We need to re remove multiples of 2 pi until uh, one of them is negative and one of them is positive. Uh, but, just to get an idea of what we're doing, we will print out the values of F0 and F366. F366, by the way, is the end of this year because there are 366 days this year because it's a leap year. Okay, console nada. Probably need to get rid of that little. So at minus 70. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that is that is correct there. Um, minus 85. Yeah, that's correct there. Uh, actually, I think again this is going to be yep. Uh, minus 89. That star is never going to say yep. This is fun. This star might never rise. Okay, here we go. Um, oh yeah, this is one thing to... Okay. F33 and 39. Right, so we basically need to divide out... Um, let's see. Got to be careful here. Um... Uh, let's see. And now that I think about it, um, F366, if F0 is bigger than 0, it's hopeless anyway because we are assuming that the, um, what the hell are we actually returning? The right ascension? Latitude, sun out, time day. Yeah, but it has to return some. Um, ah, okay. Sun info has to return the uh, rising or setting time of the sun. And um, we want that to increase throughout the year. And I think the way we have, s have it set up, that will work, I hope. Um, but I think basically we, we're going to guarantee that F366 is going to be bigger than F0. Because um, if it's not, our binary search is going to conk out anyway. I think. Um, so, what we, so what we need to do here is basically figure out how how to make F0 negative. Uh, and that is, um, I think that is going to be, um, okay. So we need to figure out how many times 2 pi goes into, uh, into F0 and then add one to that number and then subtract off that many two pies total. So it's going to be math ceiling of f of zero um, divided by two pi, which is the same as doing this. Um, Uh, 
uh, and then, well, all right, let's just see what this does. Um, this should always be a negative number. Okay, let's see what this does. Yeah, we really need to get better random numbers here. Starting to, yep. Okay. Uh, minus point, yep, 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 yep. And never less than, very close to negative 2 pi, but never quite less than negative 2 pi. Um, good, 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 good. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is g is going to be f minus a constant. g will be f minus, no, plus a constant. Same thing. So here, if f0 is bigger than 0, And we will have to define c equals 0 at the beginning. Actually, that's actually going to be correct. c equals 0. If f0 is bigger than 0, then c will be equal to this is the thing we have to, let's see, this is the thing we have to subtract from, from f, f to make sure everything works. Nope. f0 minus this monstrosity. Okay, so c is going to equal negative of that because we're adding it. Um, God, I think there's a better way to say that, but maybe there isn't. Um, and I guess if I wanted to, I could put an else if here, but um, this can be quite a bit smaller there. Um, Um, do I want to? I don't think I care. If f of 366 is still less than 0, then we need to go the other way. We need to add something. Uh, and the thing we need to add is we need to take the floor of f 366 over 2 pi. Because um, this we want to keep it... Um, now, hang on. Uh, now we need the ceiling of the negative. So negative f366 will be a positive number divided by um, divided by 2 pi will give us a, uh, and then the ceiling of that number times 2 pi will give us what we want. That'll be the thing to add, I think. Do not quote me on that. So... So in this case, we can actually, do, we don't even have to, um, we can just say g is equal to function d return um, f of d plus c. Um, and here, if, if, um, if c is, if f and g are equal, then c is equal to zero. Okay, so now, now, this is probably going to be effed up beyond belief. Okay, I think this one we actually do have a, oh, star rises at dawn, June 6th. Um, Boy, I wish I knew if that were true or not. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and because now we're including the, the equation of time and stuff, we... This is one case where maybe making this more complicated will help, because if we had a pull-down of stars and cities, 
would be a hell of a lot easier to check in, in Stellarium or anywhere else than um, trying to go with just random right ascensions, declinations, and latitudes. So, let's F with it. Um, actually, let me one more random case here just to see that it's that one we should be able to get something out of. Yeah, something tells me these numbers are not exactly correct because this is, yeah, this can't be right. Well, maybe it is. I don't think it is. Anyway, um, so let's see, I'll go for a little bit more. Um, okay, so down back here in index.html we have, I think we can get rid of this. I think I'll leave this in here for now. And then we need to add, um, we need to essentially add the or part of the other, you know, or you can input the star and um, the, the city. And that we will get from over here. Nope, over here. And let's see. And we still we already have the button, so we don't need that anymore. Okay. 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 All right, and then we need to make these a uh, star and city both. Um, yeah, I won't have a slight problem here. We both need to make the star and the city both um, autocompletes, for which we can do this. We can add jQuery. And all that'll do is put it in as a, uh, a CDN include. I want to do a little bit better than that, and I think we need jQuery UI. I think we discovered that was a, a missing thing that they didn't uh, give us. So let's see how we do that over here. Um, we needed this, and this. And this. Okay. Let's copy that over, but I'm going to make a, a sort of a big, ugly change here in just a sec. Um, I don't like using things that are remote, so I'm going to pull these in locally. Using my good friend, Bob. No, using my good friend, Curl. Assuming I can do that, which I don't really know how. All right, curl minus L zero L O is you know follow redirects and get me this control C and I think if I do control C I can just do a no I cannot. Alrighty, so how do I paste into a freaking oh I, there's probably a way. Um, but we'll cheat and we will use our good friend Emacs. Uh, 2020, 0.1, It's going to drive me nuts all year. 2020, 0.1, 2.1. Right, because that's what time it is here in Albuquerque. And then we can just say curl minus L0. Now we can just do a, um, a yank. And as ugly as that was, I'm pretty sure that did what I wanted. And then I can do a, um... I'm trying to bring these all locally over, so um, we don't have to rely on the cloud. This should be a standalone application. Uh, and so we should just be able to do this. Uh, yank. Do that. I already have a version of jQuery.min.js, but this is the latest version. It might be the same, but can't be any worse. Well, I should say that. Okay. So this... Okay, and now I need to copy all these suckers. Um, to the temp. 
And then I need to upload them here. Three at a time, baby. And then over here, I can just say link href equals this. And not have to worry about um, about whether or not it's available on the net. So that's that's what I want to do here. And here I can just say jQuery dot min and here I can just say jQuery UI. There's this thing right here. Okay. Now for some reason this is actually not formatted that well. There we go. Oh come on, you can do oh, okay, I guess it's gonna always put script unscript on the next line, although this could very easily be combined. Okay. Oh. And I think we already have that one. So this is nice. Too bad I can't put this in a for loop. Um, but I don't think that's going to work. Alright, so let's play this. I am somewhat, somewhat surprised. Um... Okay, that this the star's way too far north. I don't the star's never gonna set, yeah. Yep, we definitely need to get better at this. This one we should have some values. Not necessarily correct values, and looking at this I don't think these are correct values. Um but some values. <sighs> Refreshing. Okay. So now, I'm pretty sure these are not yet... Uh, uh, yeah, we need to go ahead and make these um, autocomplete values. And that's something we're going to do over here in script. Um, so I, oh wow, this is nothing but, but functions right now, pretty much. That's okay, we can... Uh, we can adapt. All right, Pomodoro back in two and two. Okay, and I'm back. All right, so... And now we can copy what we had over here, kind of. Um... Yeah, I think we need to do all of this. Oh wow, this is pretty much the whole file. Control C and Control V. It's highly unlikely it's going to look exactly as is, but it might. So, okay, no complaints yet. So let's see, Denub. Um, I said Denub. Okay, autocomplete not working. Autocomplete not working. 
No errors on the console here. So what are we doing wrong? Um, okay, I've got this for ion fields. So do we have, we do have a field called star. I'm pretty sure we're loading object key stars. Um, let's run it one more time maybe. Yep, not seeing any um, not seeing any sort of pop-ups there. So let's what's going on here. Um, jQuery UI, that's here. And these should probably be working, man. All right, let's see if there's anything else here we're loading that I'm not seeing. Maybe somewhere hidden. Okay, we do need to make sure all of these things occur. Well, actually, that, that shouldn't matter either. Okay, let me make sure I'm loading bright stars in big cities here, but I'm almost sure I am. Yep. Okay. So, I guess we need to do some console logs here. Um, so we'll just make sure we make it to this point first. Okay, we do. Uh, let's see if our... Um, okay, this is probably not necessary anymore because we already have this defined as field of well, let's just do a field of city for a second actually that should be an HTML object that's not good alright so field fields i equals document get element by id fields i so city star ra declat and I think maybe that's where we're, we're, we're screwing this up uh, no we have all of those right here um, problematically, though, of course, we 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 have them before uh, we 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 uh, we don't have them before we uh, call script.js. So maybe that would be a kind of a good thing to do. So maybe that that should help. Um, I actually don't know if that that is correct, but I, I'm pretty. Sh the problem is I don't know what order these load in. I think script sources are synchronous loads. So when by the time this loads, this should be defined. But I've also heard that that's not actually the case. So, whatever. Um, shiny. All right. Nice. Denebola. Beautiful. In the city of me. Go. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is all wrong, but I mean, you know. Uh, and Denebolo, by the way, is a, is a um, star at the end of Leo. It's not to be confused with Deneb, which is the brightest star in... I want to say Cygnus the Swan, but I might be wrong. I think it is actually Cygnus the Swan. Okay. So now... Stellarium time. Dun, 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 dun. Please touch this. I think I messed up two different songs there. Okay, Denebola, Albuquerque, very, very easy. This default view is going to kill me. So Albuquerque is where we are. Denebola. That's what we're going to find. Zoom out. Um, and let's... I'm almost sure this is wrong, but... 99%. So on December 5th, the star presumably rises at dawn. So December 5th. Five. Come on. And because this is dawn in Albuquerque, we'll get, we'll get it to like 10 and then see when the star is going to rise. All right, altitude is plus 33. This already not looking good. Um, 
also, let's see. Star rises at... Which is a great time if this was, uh, if this were, um... Oh, it actually tells you when the star rises. 7.20 Greenwich time, which is the middle of the frickin' night, I'm pretty sure. Uh, because we're on Greenwich time, that's the only reason. Um... The sun rises at... 14.04, so nowhere near close to what we're looking at here. Um... And let me see if I can figure out why. I probably can't. Um, okay. So, I mean, that's, like, desperately far away from the right answer. Um, sets with sun. Okay, this is rises at dawn, but it's pretty much just as bad. Um, rises of sun November 29th. I don't think that's going to make a big difference. We'll do it, but, um, da, 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 da. um, so now, yeah, we're, this is, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Um, rises at 743, and again, that's UTC, so that's not going to be very helpful to us. All right, let's see if we were any better on the set times, which I don't think we will be, unless it's just by coincidence. December 22nd, it sets with the sun. So let's, uh, let's see if that actually happens. Okay. It is 13 degrees above, so we will just, uh, okay, it's getting, okay. So it's actually, it's risen, and now it's going to go up, up, up. Down, 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 and now we can just go. Uh, and again, this is interesting because it is the um, it is the approximate sunset time if this were mountain time. Although actually, it's a little bit late for summer, so maybe it's not even that. Um, and then the sun will set at not 19:34, but at um, six hours. So we're, we're way, way off here. Um, and I don't know why. However, I do know that I have been streaming for two hours and 40 minutes. Woo! Damn, I stream forever. Um, and I think that's going to be it for today's stream. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will pick this up next time.